Welcome to this side event on the Belgian expertise in, in offshore wind. Um, this session also has live interpretation from English to Chinese if you require it. So you can just follow the interpretation instructions in the main event chat. Um, so here with us, we have Christophe uh, Dene, who is the chairman of the Belgian offshore wind cluster. Um, and he is here uh, today to present on how Belgium has grown their offshore industry and the expertise um, that the Belgian offshore industry has for emerging markets such as Taiwan. So Christoph, I will hand it over to you now. I would just mention that your presentation is an in-presentation mode. So if you want to make that full screen um, so everyone can see it. And if you would like to the slides to be bigger for the attendees um, joining us, you can just double click on the slides and they will uh, maximize. So with that being said, I will now hand it off uh, to you, Christoph. Okay, thank you. Hello, I am uh, Christoph uh, Dene. I'm the president of the Belgian Offshore Cluster, and I want to tell you more about the expertise, um, what we have gathered in Belgium the latest uh, 10 years. We started our first wind farms in uh, 2009. Uh, we were uh, one of the early adopters in the wind farm uh, industry, and we have put in place 2.2 uh, uh, gigawatt until now in the latest 10 years. So this means also that we got the time to learn a lot uh, during uh, this uh, decade. Um, we are operating uh, typically from the port in Ostend to everywhere. It's a picture of Europe, but uh, to everywhere in the world, actually. So uh, we have interconnections everywhere. I'm not alone in uh, the offshore uh, cluster. I have some um, Erwin and Vincent, which are my vice presidents, and also Rebecca as my uh, general secretary. So what do we do? We represent uh, the interests of the Belgian offshore industry, and of course, uh, Belgium is too small, uh, so we want to, of course, export uh, our knowledge and expertise, not only in Europe, but worldwide, of course. Um, we have uh, quite, uh, we are an independent and industrial platform. I think this is important. There is no government in our board of directors, um, but we keep uh, track of the relationships between the sector itself, the blue energy sector, the governments and innovation cluster or the universities. So um, um, we have some members in our uh, uh, in our organization, which are world leaders, like for instance Demi and Eon de Nul, and they have uh, they are working already worldwide in uh, in all uh, continents, actually. And I want to tell you more about, uh, if you look at the life cycle of a wind farm, then you can define uh, different stages. And at each stage, there are Belgian companies which can add value in a wind farm. Um, we walk through it phase by phase, but just maybe um, in a pre-development phase, before financial close, of course, you need also um, engineering. Uh, people uh, for doing service, also for grid connections and so on. Um, so there are below. You see each time one of the some members of uh, BUC, um, which can help you in this kind of uh, phase. And production and acquisition phase, where of course we don't have a wind turbine manufacturer. Um, but we are involved in uh, quite a lot of, um, there are a lot of subcontractors which deliver things to wind turbine manufacturers. And our members, we also have, uh, of course, um, MHE, Vestas, Siemens, and also GE, which are also active in uh, Belgium, uh, not for manufacturing purposes, but for uh, O&M. And you see again all the different companies which can assist you in uh, this phase of the wind farm. After production, installation, and commissioning, um, 
of course uh, you, you can have uh, you need uh, space at the port and uh, installation and commissioning uh, can happen uh, at the port onshore commissioning and then afterwards of course we have the offshore uh, commissioning again a lot of uh, belgian companies which can help you and assist you in uh, this kind of operations And then after installation, of course, we come to operation and maintenance phase, uh, where uh, again, um, specific um, activities needs to be uh, deployed, surveys, monitoring, uh, of course, vessel transportation, and so on. Uh, we didn't have the luck yet uh, for a decommission a wind farm, uh, but also uh, it needs to be taken into account in the process of a wind farm uh, life cycle. And here we have a, little, a few members which are acting in it, but still uh, Jan de Nul, Demi, Herboskire, and Hio XZ, for instance. Now, if we're talking about uh, the competence and expertise that we collect in all these different members, um, I did make a nice uh, presentation that I just list all, all our expertise. So. I uh, propose to just walk through the different topics which can be offered by one or more uh, members of the Belgian offshore cluster. We're talking about advanced data management platforms, uh, data. I come back to it later on because um, we had also uh, Belgian offshore days. This is a conference uh, which typically happens at the end of March. Uh, but, but because of Corona, it has been delayed and I come back to the program for uh, March in 2021. We can, uh, one of or more of the members can also offer grid uh, connection consultancy, geotechnical inspection and meteorological data, data production and collection as well from turbine as electrical systems, monitoring systems, operational management system, transport, security, uh, there is a lot of companies which has expertise in structural health monitoring, power semiconductors uh, to AC and DC uh, converter stations, um, also on uh, the search and recovery of UXO, uh, there is a lot of uh, companies which can assist you, preliminary search, data, risk analysis, also for heavy lift operations, there are some managers which can offer this. Uh, we also have agencies for tailor-made shipping, Positioning solutions, uh, integrated bridge systems uh, for uh, crew transfer. Uh, we have innovative compressors to vacuum solutions and air treatment systems in, uh, as a competence uh, in one of our members. Environmental data acquisition, processing, telemetry systems, industrial bolting, screwing tools, also, uh, the installation, inspection, repair, and mates, which is called IRM and decommissioning, uh, more likely uh, to UXO. Uh, marine engineering and, and uh, environmental remediation. Offshore network infrastructure. This was only the first page. Um, we have expertise in electricity transmission and energy transition, uh, power and temperature control needs, integrated solutions for telecom networking and security systems, uh, prefabrication and assembly halls, including blast and paint shops um, for during uh, manufacturing, sealing applications, um, corrosion control and coating consulting, uh, bolting, torquing and tensioning activities, inspection and maintenance by use of rope access and drones, um, Rope access was the standard now in Belgium, more and more uh, drones are active for not replacing totally the rope access, but uh, uh, let's say replacing uh, normal rope access uh, activities. Turnkey solutions for major component exchanges, hydrographic, geophysical, geotechnical and topographical surveys, crew transfers and uh, there are already some companies active with uh, specialized UAVs, meaning it's unmanned underwater uh, robots, uh, port agency, customs and uh, crew shunting, uh, ship repair and maintenance, 
coatings, protective paintings and anti-corrosion treatment, safety and emergency training and consultancy, which can be quite important, uh, I think, in a uh, new emerging uh, market like this in Taiwan. Uh, we talk about GWO and IRATA certifications for all people which are doing activities offshore. Uh, complex civil constructions and offshore projects, scheduled and unscheduled maintenance of wind turbines, equipment for working at height and rescue, demarcation, mooring and data buoys, uh, monitoring offshore uh, power cables on parallel depth. And I'm at the last uh, slide, but still, uh, international aviation services, transport of crew, supplies to uh, wind turbines. Some topics cover uh, the same activities, but uh, these are the statements of the individual uh, members. Uh, search and rescue operations, high quality personal protective equipment, um, science park. Uh, we have a university science park in uh, Belgium. Uh, where uh, we, the, business, uh, the industry and the universities and the government meets together uh, for doing innovative projects. So, um, design and construction of distribution and control panels. We also have uh, one of the members certifies drone pilot, but I think uh, for Taiwan there are more specific regulations, so I don't know. Uh, port facilities for handling, lifting, storage, and assembling of heavyweight components, uh, safety and survival trainings and services, high quality steel components, ranging from tubes, sheets, bars, fittings, fasteners, um, one stop shop logistic service, uh, nothing too heavy, nothing too high is the statement, uh, energy management and automation, uh, working at height and depths with IRATA uh, certifications. Engineering and fabrication of substations and foundations, service and maintenance of critical safety equipment, uh, maritime and offshore safety solutions and services, uh, sensor based integrity, monitoring solution from engineering to advanced reporting, and uh, also a specific component with zinc rich coaching of uh, what is called film uh, galvanizing system. So uh, you see. This is a bunch of expertise, uh, specialities. In Belgium, we have uh, nowadays 1.7 megawatt of installed capacity. But by the end, it will be 2.2 in a few months. And it will represent 10% of the total electricity demand in Belgium. It's equal to average 8 uh, terawatt hour uh, production by year. And after 2020, uh, we will uh, ex increase the capacity to four, 4.5 gigawatt, but it will take a couple of years, I think, in 2024, uh, this new area with new uh, wind concessions will start. Just to give you an overview, um, this is the Belgian North Sea. On the upper right side, you see uh, nine concessions where it will be finalized by the end of 2020 in total 2.2 uh, gigawatts and another 2 gigawatts will be uh, commissioned um, on the left side where you see uh, the real red areas. These are new areas of 221 uh, square kilometers, the extra zones for uh, the coming wind farms. Maybe tell something about um, our members uh, membership um, we have around 60 active members and uh, as a member you need to uh, show or uh, demonstrate something which is relevant to the offshore industry so uh, of course we do representation of the belgian offshore industry to belgian government also to other organizations um, you can become a member like i told you um, if you can show that you can create an added value uh, in the offshore industry and you must have an office based in Belgium to become a member. We also uh, cooperate together with uh, partners. Uh, the Belgium Offshore Platform is another organization in Belgium which collects all the uh, wind farm concessions. Uh, we cooperate also with the Chambers of Commerce, also with um, 
uh, West, the province West Flanders, the Port of Ostend, uh, the Blue Cluster, which is the organization for the innovation goals, and also uh, Flanders Investment and Trade. Then uh, we can uh, we have all the different levels of the different uh, members. Um, there are uh, also the big ones or uh, member. Actually, everything which everybody, every company which can mean something in the offshore industry is also a member of uh, BOC. Sometimes you recognize. So all the competences which are listed in a few slides before, these are the competences of all these members together. All right, what are the activities that we normally, we organize our own uh, fair. Uh, it's called the Belgian Offshore Days. I come back to it later on. We are also active for the Belgian offshore industry in uh, the wind energy fairs, like in Hamburg, Copenhagen, uh, Nantes in France and uh, Taipei. Uh, we should have been there normally in uh, March uh, this year, but uh, because of Corona, um, it has been delayed to the physical fair, I mean, to uh, next year. And now we have a virtual event, of course. We also organize events with uh, uh, keynote speakers, typically of uh, business developers. We also participate in other organizations for um, representing the Belgian offshore industry. We do also, also do some lobbying in the Belgian context. And of course, uh, when we want to export our knowledge, we do it in cooperation with uh, Flanders Investment and Trade. What is typically, uh, if we go to a fair uh, at the end of the first uh, day, uh, we typically organize the Belgian Beer Night, which is quite famous. Um, this is a picture of uh, Hamburg, uh, not this year, but uh, uh, two years ago, of course. Um, and normally we had uh, our Belgian offshore days in March, which has been delayed to the end of November. But again, the physical fair is again delayed to uh, March uh, 18th and 19th of March next year, which exactly the same program and conference uh, like it should ha have been organized this year. Maybe to give you a, a highlight, um, what is important is the, 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 the theme for the conference is all about data, increasing value by data-driven innovation in the offshore wind farm life cycle. Let's say that commissioning wind farms is not becoming a commodity, but it's a matter of time. Uh, so the new wave is we have enormous amounts of data. What can we do with it? Can we use it on a smart, intelligent way? So this is the context of the conference. During the life cycle of an offshore wind farm, the data collection starts already long before the first foundation is being placed. We talk about geotechnical inspection, meteo data. And once the production starts, of course, we have data production and uh, collections, but from so many uh, involved different systems and also from the people active in the offshore, they also generate data. The data can come from turbine, uh, electrical systems, condition monitoring systems, operational management systems, transport systems, security systems, uh, all, and all other offshore activities. So uh, to just give you an idea, the data lake of a wind farm easily grows with hundreds of gigabytes by year, and you need to keep it uh, for typically 20 years. Now, um, in, uh, 10 years later, there are several Belgian companies that use data from offshore wind farms in the services and also the operators of the concession holders of the wind farms themselves innovate uh, with data to gain more insights into the overall performance of their offshore power plants. So you need to use the data to have better performance in your wind farm or optimize things. It can go from, for instance, uh, if you need to plan activities that you uh, calculate the optimal route from uh, turbine A to the next turbine to your offshore substation and so on. It can uh, be used in very different use cases. And uh, next year, um, the Belgian Offshore Days 2020 a conference will present so the industry and research insights, insights into the potential 
for advanced uses of these various data sets covered in the life cycle of an offshore wind farm, as well during the design phase and the operational phase and the commissioning phase. Um, to give you uh, a small insight, what who are the speakers and the topics? Um, the conference speakers, we have one speaker about uh, geotechnical data, exploring the sub bottom. We talk also about engineering data, and uh, it's meaning uh, during the construction, geotechnical data for offshore structures, the grout and grouted connections and its applications. Uh, during installation and EPCI uh, contracting, smart underwater noise management. Also, uh, monitoring and operational control data, the added value of distributed acoustic, acoustic sensing, uh, human data meets machine data, and also about lifetime extension and beyond design validation and data driven lifetime assessment of offshore foundations. After the conference itself, there is a panel discussion. And, and the panel members, these are all, excuse me, uh, they're all, uh, the let's say, the ORM or R&D managers of the Belgian uh, wind farm concessions, which are involved. So it's quite uh, interesting. The, the conference happens on the first day, the 18th of March next year, and typically in Ostend, uh, this is the place to be in the Belgian offshore industry. So I hope it was delighting. For the listeners, uh, we have you can contact us on our website. Uh, of course, for our local exhibition in Belgium, uh, we have the Belgian Offshore Days. You can also email, of course, to us um, an info email uh, box, administration, myself, and also Erwin. Or if there are any questions, I'm happy uh, to answer them if I know the answer, of course. All right. Thank you. Hello? Are there any questions? Hi, everyone, and thanks, Christoph, for that presentation. It was really interesting. Um, so if anyone has any questions now for Christoph on how the, you know, the development of the Belgian offshore industry, what type of opportunities they're looking at um, to export their expertise, um, obviously, especially in Taiwan, um, you can post your questions in the session chat here. And I think Christoph, you'll be online for the next little bit and, and take up any questions that, that people may have. Um, otherwise, you can message Christoph directly. If you go to the People's tab and find him, you can message him uh, directly with any other questions and, and connect with him there. So um, I will leave the room now to, to Christoph and for anyone else who wants to jump in and ask any questions. Oh, and there goes Christoph. Never mind. <laughs> so I will we'll get uh, Christoph back on, I think. Um, let me just see. Um, so you can stick around. I think we're trying to get Christoph back uh, online. If not, you can um, message him di directly by finding him in the uh, People's tab. The Belgian offshore cluster also has a booth in the virtual expo. So you can go and check out uh, their booth there and connect with them if you have any further questions. Um, the next side event that we have coming up in the agenda, actually we have two parallel sessions uh, going on. So the first one is organized by uh, NORWEP. Um, it's on oil and gas expertise. Um, so that's a really hot topic. Rick Van Gogh taking that out and seeing how offshore oil and gas expertise can uh, transfer over to the offshore industry. And the other session that we also have going on parallelly in half an hour is oh. organized by RE100 um, on corporate renewable energy uh, procurement. 
So those are the next two sessions in half an hour. In the meantime, I'll leave the, the session to Christoph who can answer any questions that you may have. Hey, Christoph, me again. Looks like our audience is a bit shy this morning on asking questions. So I'll come in and ask one uh, to you um, to, to get the ball rolling. Um, yep. <laughs> so um, the Belgian offshore wind cluster, obviously you have experience um, in developing offshore wind, not only in Belgium, but in Europe. Um, what has your experience or your members' experience been in emerging markets and, and what type of opportunities are you looking for specifically um, in Taiwan? Um, we've seen over the past um, few months um, many kind of uh, partnerships from global leaders or European leaders in offshore wind with local partnerships companies, for example, um, and the market is moving forward and huge interest in it um, from the uh, international sector. So what kind of um, opportunities are your members looking for and what experience could you uh, bring to emerging markets um, based on your experience in developing offshore wind in Belgium? And okay. Um, I think, first of all, it's a challenge. Uh, the number of gigawatts that Taiwan wants to uh, deploy, if we compare it to um, the time we got to got our experience in it, so it will be very challenging. Uh, also in uh, offshore operations and more specifically safety uh, in, in this uh, area, in this field. Um, we are also lucky that uh, one of the bigger uh, Belgian companies already active in Taiwan um, I'm talking about uh, Jan de Nul and Demi, which has also already joint ventures with uh, CDWE and so on. So uh, that's uh, good for us, but I think that um, in, in the time frame that you want to deploy, you will need uh, expertise, not only from Belgium, I think, I think from uh, several European countries. Uh, but let's say that we had time to build up experience. So I, I'm convinced that uh, they will need experience that we got it already in Europe um, and more specific from Belgium or our members, of course. So, um, yeah, it's uh, challenging. Um, what so is also important, okay, there is a question uh, in every country about local content. That should be good if uh, there should be more information how we can easily found a company, uh, cooperate with uh, local companies and so on. So uh, it's still, uh, yeah, I think, 14 hours uh, flying. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but of course, uh, I were interested in this kind of topics uh, for making it easier to uh, have local corporations. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I noticed that um, your uh, member Deme Group, which is a Belgian company, they have just started construction now on the Green Jade vessel in Taiwan, which is quite exciting. Um, so that's that's really good news uh, that that's going forward. Um, if anyone has any questions for Christoph, you can either post them in the chat and I can ask them to him, or you can request to share your audio and video um, and join the session and, and ask him directly. Um, so Christoph, maybe I'll ask you another question while I'm on a screen and we wait for the other questions to come in. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, so with, with Belgium's offshore wind market, um, you mentioned it is a small country. I, I'm actually based in Brussels right now, so I'm doing well <laughs> <in Belgium>. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I know how small the country is. Um, so it is a small country, so in, there is kind of um, a glass ceiling when it comes to developing offshore wind in that specific market because there's a limit to the energy demand um, because it is a smaller country. Um, we've seen in Europe, especially in the in the North Sea, um, kind of cooperation between different markets, especially on offshore wind, um, you know, transmission lines between uh, different countries, um, and also manufacturing and for logistics, it makes it a lot simpler because all there's a cooperation between all the kind of the clusters in Europe in that region. Uh, that one of the questions uh, we often ask is, um, could that same thing be replicated in Asia, for example? It's a bit different politically, 
and and whatnot. So um, my question, I guess, is would do you think that has been a major success for the Belgian offshore industry, this kind of regional cooperation to open up new doors and opportunities um, for you, uh, the Belgian companies? Um, and do you think the same sort of thing could maybe be replicated in, in Asia? Yep, um, I understand your question. Um, it's not that we have uh, of know everything. So we can, uh, with all the Belgian companies, we cannot construct a wind farm. Um, so you need also other companies, like of course the turbine manufacturer, also uh, the companies which can build offshore substations and so on. Uh, you have uh, the cable as, and, and so on. So, um, but just pick up uh, context and put it down in Taiwan, this will not work. You will uh, need time to create uh, your local supply chain actually. Um, um, Everybody knows each other, let's say, in Europe. So everybody, a lot of people are going to Taiwan, of course. Um, but yeah, it will be still uh, a different case than, uh, than in Europe. Um, everybody knows each other, cooperates already with each other, or cooperates typically with this kind of companies. And this, even in Europe, uh, we just started with uh, the French offshore wind farm. So, uh, Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, in Belgium we have constructed in Germany, Denmark, UK, UK is uh, leading in, in that part, uh, leading in the meaning of uh, they construct most of the gigawatts, uh, let's say, uh, nowadays in, in Europe. Um, as Belgium expertise, we were uh, early adopter. We were one of the first wind farms which has been constructed. Uh, lessons learned, how can you do better and so on. And I think again now, I think we are uh, leading as in Belgium as uh, the, the technology that is necessary for the wind farms, but then on the data management level. This is, let's say, the next wave. How construction and commissioning wind farms, yeah, it's, let's say, regular. Uh, every, not everybody can do that, but uh, they can do it everywhere. Um, but then uh, get intelligence out of the data that you uh, collect. I think this is a totally new wave and uh, it's not only about data from the turbines, it has so many different aspects, how you can uh, optimize your wind farm and I think we are in Belgium again leading on, on this level. Um, even if our uh, North Sea is small, <laughs> we still can export our uh, knowledge about data management and how do you, what do you do with the data that you collect. That's that's interesting. Um, and for on on the data management and kind of digitalization side, we how is this important for the offshore wind industry in the future? You know, to reduce costs, um, to provide you know investor security, for example. Um, what type of different solutions um, does the Belgian industry have have to offer that could be interesting for emerging markets like Taiwan? Well, uh, first of all, you have. Uh, it it's, uh, uh, let's say, the new Industry 4.0 uh, data platforms that are typically used. Uh, um, I think uh, one of the latest wind farms, they are collecting 2, uh, 22,000 parameters by second, which, are, which is collected only from one wind farm. So <laughs> if you multiply it with different wind farms, it's a huge amount of data. And uh, one of the companies which can exploit this, but we have also this on monitoring, cable monitoring systems. There are so many different monitoring data management platforms. What one of them is uh, event. It's uh, of the Ebo Enterprises, and I think there, there's tomorrow a technical session about it. But it's not only data management, it's actually uh, what do you need, and it's also an expertise which is not uh, well uh, known, I think, nowadays in Taiwan. It has everything to do with marine coordination. You not just can go offshore to turbine. Eh? You need uh, GWO certifications. You need a transport plan. You need to announce it. How many people are on the vessel? Which route will you take? These are all new things uh, for, uh, for for Taiwan. Uh, we're talking about QHSE, which is in general safety, but uh, it's important. Um, let's say that we had time uh, to understand what safety is and. Um, it's not because you have always a software tool that the policies are there, um, but it's important. Yeah? Um, nobody wants to come in uh, 
some newspaper where some people were drowned or uh, or dead. So that's important that there is attention for it, and it's also uh, respected uh, by the government, uh, mm -hmm. which needs to keep this in mind and uh, uh, put policy rules uh, for this uh, to or to oblige it. Uh, um, so we have so many different aspects aspects for running uh, a wind farm and uh, data is of course important for uh, doing this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, health and safety is obviously a, a, a big issue. And we actually have a side event um, coming up later today at, I think it's at 5.45 p.m. Taiwan time um, by G Plus, um, who, is, uh, who provide best practices on training and health and safety for the offshore industry. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about health and safety, you can join uh, that side event as well. And I believe in, in, in Taiwan, there are some GWO um, certified training centers already, but of course, as we discussed in our, the workforce session yesterday, there is a, a gap of the workforce needed to fulfill the ambitions needed um, uh, by the Taiwanese government. So very important to have that and also to protect the um, reputation of the industry when going into new markets, right? You want to be seen as an industry that offers good jobs and good opportunities uh, long term. Just because so, uh, this is an opportunity yeah. for creating local content. Yes. Uh, so uh, they need to give it the right attention. Yeah, exactly. Especially in the kind of context of COVID-19 when people are looking for opportunities for e economic recovery and job creation and, and, and investment, right? We want to make a sure investment case for the offshore industry so that we're able to kind of create those local jobs as well. Uh, so if there's no other questions here, um, people seem to be a bit quiet. So I think we'll actually wrap up this session. And if you would like to know anything more from the Belgian offshore cluster or from Christophe, you can either reach out to him uh, directly on the platform via the people's tab in the chat, or you can go visit the Belgian offshore cluster booth in the virtual expo to find more information on that. Unfortunately, uh, because <laughs> we're doing this event virtually, we won't be able to offer the Belgian beer <laughs> <laughs> that they would normally offer in a physical event, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> but, but you can offer it in, uh, I think it's March 2021. The new fair? Uh, uh, sorry, April April, April. April. April, yeah, 2021. Hopefully we can, uh, uh, you know, offer you with a cold glass of, of Belgian beer there. <laughs> yeah, 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 but that's a promise. Uh, we will be there. <laughs> super, super. Well, thanks so much, Christoph, uh, for sharing uh, that information and your insights um, from the Belgian perspective. And please, uh, everyone, feel free to go check out their booth or to contact Christoph directly for any more questions. So... I'll wrap it up there. And then the next two side events start in 15 minutes on oil and gas expertise for the offshore wind sector organized by Norweb and uh, the RE100 side event on corporate renewable energy uh, procurement. So I'll see you guys all again in 15 minutes uh, for those sessions. Thanks, Christoph. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Bye-bye, Alicia. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.